This video is brought to you in part by True Tech Tools, quality tools, essential support. All right, it's Lifestyles of Rich and Famous. We have an ice machine. I know I was just complaining about these not too long ago, but my buddy said, hey, we need you to come fix our ice machine. So after I got done with all the grocery stores and stuff, I thought we'd come look at this thing. Looks like it's off on bin full switch, which we'll see whether or not we got a major issue or what's going on. Filter looks like it was changed a year and a half ago. Let's see what happens with that. See if the pressure drops down to next to nothing and see what's going on. These things are pretty much uh, pretty simple to work on. Most of the time it's they're dirty. Ice doesn't release from the plate. So let's take a look and see if this is uh, a water related issue like it usually is and kind of go from there. Yeah, I don't know why they got the water shut off in two different spots. Okay, that's just an extra water filter or an extra water line. Don't know why they would do that. Basically allowing you to bypass it, I guess. And then this here is normally your bleed. So obviously somebody didn't know what they were doing when they wired this up, but that usually happens. And there's the line going to the machine. So like I said, that's usually the, the bleed. We're coming in here looking at the water tray, which looks like it's going across fairly decent. We got a little bit of gunk in there. This has a float, electronic water float. Got everybody and their brother coming in here wanting ice. I think these people would know how bad these machines are. Not feeling real good about this water filter. Okay, it just went into harvest. Let's see what this thing does here. Water level at 40 right now. So you can tell it just drained some out, so it should be starting to fill up. You can hear the harvest cycle trying to happen. Okay, so what's the problem? It's a little bit thin, so what's the problem here? It's a little bit thin. A little bit thicker would help possibly uh, make it fall out. Um, so it could use a little bit of adjustment up there. Which we've got that right there, that behind there, you can adjust that just like you would on the uh, any other machine. So I don't think we have a refrigeration issue. I think it's going to come down to a water issue. Uh, we're holding there at 20 on the uh, water filter, which generally is, uh, or 40, I'm sorry, 20 is usually the lowest. So we're doing okay there. It just seems to me that we've uh, got a water issue. So I'm going to run some cleaner through it, scrub it of it, and I bet we'll be fine after that. Okay, so we've been watching it now for a while and we're not really seeing anything in particular acting up. And it just further kind of goes along with what I'm figuring is probably an issue with the machine being a little dirty. So we're gonna go ahead and run some cleaner through it. It made another batch and basically it made another batch just like it should. So I think what's happening after time, the plates don't release the ice and then it malfunctions because I mean, they have some ice in here and he called in last Friday. So they made it through the week somehow. But yeah, don't make sense. Okay, so what you gotta do is lift up on this. There is a device that grabs right there on the side, on both sides. And if you unhook the one edge there, here on the left, you're able to maneuver it and get it out. Once you've got that out, you've got a thumb screw here and a thumb screw over here. So loosen those up and then you'll be able to get the machine apart, get better access into it to clean it. Once we've got that, we're able to get into the water tray a lot easier. It's not horrible. Like I said, it's, it's a lot better than what it was the last time I was here. And then you've got your water probes down there and then the pump, I've replaced that already back in 18. From what the maintenance supervisor said, his guys were out here and supposedly just didn't seem like it was getting cold enough to actually freeze. So we're gonna go ahead and double check the refrigerant charge while we're at it too. Generally, there is a probe right here that will keep track of the actual temperature of the water. And if it's not getting cold as it should, it will it'll stop the flow, let it get colder. Then if there's too much of an issue where it's out of whack too much, it'll usually give you a code refrigeration issue. 
since we were freezing, I put it in harvest. All I had to do is hit that actual blue uh, button right there. And then I was able to put it in harvest. So it's going to run hot gas through there, melt off any ice, and then we'll run it through the clean cycle, which requires to hold the clean button. And then we'll run some nickel safe cleaner through here, which our supply house seems to be in bed with new Calgon. So that's the reason why we got it. Most of the products they've got is new Calgon. Okay, so right there you can see we've had an issue because it wasn't thick enough. You see it is not harvest correctly. See how it didn't drop the ice out. So generally that is a sign of a dirty panel. One thing I noticed, look at that right there. That seems like that ain't supposed to be like that. Normally you wouldn't figure it is. Normally it's gonna be tight like that. So we may have an issue there. I don't know. It don't look like it's soldered in there though. Yeah, don't show no uh, solder joints there, but maybe it's not a big deal. It don't seem like it's flexing. Anything that would hold the ice on the plate could be an issue. You can see we're having some issues down here on the copper plate. It's nickel coated. You can see that it's not doing real well there. That can cause some issues for sure. So uh, I know their guys have been cleaning it and they're not always the most thorough in the world. And they could be running something in there that's too potent. Hard to say. So I put it in the off mode, then hit clean, and then it did come on and run in clean mode. So you can hear it right now draining. So we should uh, be starting off here in a little bit. This was installed in 2013, so we're 12 years old. Condenser coil is pretty clean. No real issues there. A little bit of dust back here. This is kind of in a room here where they've got some of the athletic stuff. And it's out of school, obviously. It uh, gets used mainly by the teachers. As you noticed, we are dropping down below 40. We're still not quite to 30. Because that filter's been a while, I think we're gonna go ahead and change it. Just get, ooh, ooh, look at that, you see that? Every now and again, it must be hitting uh, kind of a crappy. Yeah, there it is going low again. That might be somebody drawing a lot of water in say the kitchen area or something like that. Okay, they usually want about three ounces in there. About three ounces area. And then anything we get on the ice, we'll rinse that out here with the hose there. We'll just disconnect, disconnect it and rinse that off. This is mainly a citrus base, so it's uh, not going to kill you, but uh, generally, corrosive on metals, irritation to skin, causes eye damage. That ain't good, huh? So what I do here, we'll go ahead and turn on this water down here again. Here, so we can either technically valve off and unhook here. Okay, that allows me to have some water here so we can fill up our actual bowl so I can rinse out the other things that like uh, the sensors there. And it also allows me to wash away anything that might've dripped on the ice. So what we'll do is we'll put a little bit of cleaner in there and then we'll dilute it with some water. So it works out really well when you're in a room like this where they don't have any water uh, faucets or anything like that. Cause like I said, I'm pretty much in a crappy little equipment room and you're not getting into anything in particular. This will allow us to clean the actual sensor here. So we can pull that out. Okay, we'll let that set in there for a while and let that soak and then we'll scrub it and get any residue off of the water thickness sensor. That can cause a lot of false alarms. So, and while it's setting there circulating through the machine, we're going to get the water probes cleaned as well. Uh, depending on how it is, sometimes you're best off to uh, clean those probes separately. It's not real bad calcium, but there'll be some calcium sometimes in between that white and the stainless. Sometimes you're best off to take that apart and just clean it separately. So. That's uh, kind of one of the recommended ways. And I've covered that in one of my other machine cleaning videos from Scotsman. Okay, bigger's better. So we're gonna put our new one in there. This is what we carry on our trucks, the I-14 or the I-4000. That one there is an I-2000. So 
Same filter, just a little bit bigger. Push up and turn, there we go, and put a date on that. Now, there's only one way these can go when they're going back in there. The prongs are a little different. You can also see how they've got the prongs there, uh, the holes punched on one side versus the other side. So we just gotta scrub that a little bit and then we'll put her back in there and it just goes down in and locks into that area there. We've got the probes all cleaned up there. Everything's looking good on that. They can only go one way. Got this cleaned up. Like I said, soaking it works really well. Most of your problems are water related. I mean, there could be an issue with the refrigerant. I doubt it, but it's possible. If so, we'll just kind of go from there. We'll deal with that when the time comes. I usually use my toothbrush that I get from the dentist to get into these little small spots up here in the top. Uh, yes, it's best to tear it completely apart, but like I said, I just cleaned this not too horribly long ago. I think our problem has more to do with the nickel coating starting to go away, which makes it stick to the copper a little bit more, because underneath that plate, it, usually it's copper a lot of times. And so, it just doesn't want to release from that. And we've already taken apart this and cleaned that all out gotten all up in these little crevices back here in the back and gotten all that stuff clean and our main main things are our sensor and our water sensor. Scotsman, you hit clean and it should start blinking. You notice before it was blinking, now it's not blinking, so now it should do a drain cycle over and over. And then I'll also recycle the um, timer in there so it tells you when it's time to be cleaned. And then we can get started on the refrigeration section of it. And there goes the uh, pump. I'm getting a better look at those plates and you can really see what's happening is it's starting to come apart. And uh, they, they basically tin them together of some sort, solder tin, whatever you want to call it. And uh, that's not looking very good. I'm gonna let him know that there's a good chance this needs a new evaporator, but at this point, I would probably just recommend a new machine. We have our valve core depressor tool there from Appion, which I got from True Tech Tools. Uh, it actually will lock in the refrigerant and you lose almost absolutely nothing with that when you're using it. So that's what I'm using right now to measure my pressures and uh, didn't need anything on the suction. So we're waiting for it to go through the harvest right now. I just checked the panel, there was no ice on it. So I would say we're probably getting a false alarm from the sensor. Anytime you clean them, a lot of times they will pick up the moisture on the sensor and so it may need cleaned off. Let's go down here on bottom and see if it's actually showing that it has the harvest signal or not. Right there, ready to harvest. You can see that light is lit up, and that's the reason why it went into harvest, so it's not ready. So we need to pull that out, rinse it off, dry it off. That cleaner, for whatever reason, always seems to throw the sensor off. I don't know if it gets stuck in there or what. Okay, we just finished wiping some of that off. Kind of give a tap and get that residual moisture that's in between the metal and the plastic. It will pick that water up and cause it to believe it has a full sheet of ice. Okay, I believe we got it. Looks like we got it there. I ended up having to go out and get the Milwaukee blower, take it out of there and then blow it completely out. Now it's okay because it went into harvest one more time. This is not common this is not an unusual problem whether it be for manitowoc or any of them that use these capacitive style uh, ice thickness gauges but that's one of those things that happens so just keep that in mind if you have one of those issues just completely air dry it out with either a blower or nitrogen whatever so i heard it crack a little bit when it went into the start of harvest here so it's starting to drain out the water should dump the ice here in just a little bit let's take a look at the pressures all right here we can see that the head pressure is in 154 and then the suction is 132. This is during harvest. Uh, let's sit here and look at uh, 404. There's 404. So we're running 64 and 72 right now. This is the harvest uh, on the machine. It just dumped the ice out on the ordeal here. Not looking too bad. Yep. I think we're looking pretty good. That came out really slick and easy. Might take it just a touch thicker. Okay, I have to take that cover back off, so let's get up here on that and just do a 
Oh boy, that's pretty tight. That's already as tight as it can go, ain't it? Darn close, we better pull that out and adjust it because I feel like I'm gonna break it otherwise. Okay, I loosened it up one turn or half a turn and then took it forward again and it went in fine that time. <sighs> Definitely it's not one of the easier ones to work on far as accessibility. This is under the bar type crap. I hate these. So what we do is we lock in the one side then you have to pull this door up here on top forward so that you can get the other side. So we just hook the one side here like that. Then when we get to this side here, a little bit longer this time. I can hear some of the cracking, which I don't usually like because that usually means the ice is starting to expand on the plate a little more than what I'd like. Uh, we're making, one thing that sucks about this thing is there's no adjustment while it's in place. Uh, the Manitowoc gives you a place where you can reach through and adjust it. This one doesn't. Sure, you could get in there with the drill bit and drill it, but can't really get that. But we'll see how thick this ice comes out this time. There we go. That is a little too thick. It definitely gave it the weight that it needed. I about shave off about a sixteenth yet, but yeah, it's obviously very sensitive, but I think that's gonna be good enough for now. We'll do one quick adjustment, which I'm not gonna re-record, but we're good. Okay, refrigeration looks pretty good here from what I can see. I don't think we've got any issues. Wait for one more harvest cycle, make sure it does good, and then we'll get this uh, unhooked and we'll get, we'll get her going. All right, guys, that's uh, a backup video in case I don't get anything else today. Uh, it's been kind of an interesting week. Uh, so boring. I don't usually like showing ice machine crap anymore. It's kind of, I've done enough videos of it, but it's better than nothing, I guess. Uh, kind of a refresher. You guys do know that you can actually click on the channel and actually search through the videos. I also have playlists. I mean, there's 550 videos to go through. So, you know, there's quite a few different things and a lot of them, if you're newer, you not seen half those videos, there is a crap ton of them there. They just don't always get recommended to you. So you literally have to go into the channel and look at the actual channel, uh, the actual videos that are underneath the channel. And you can go back all the way to 2018 or whatever it is I first started. Other than that, guys, I really appreciate you taking the time to watch it. And until next time, we'll catch you on the next one. Later.